welcome back to another basics game maker studio tutorial and this time i'm gonna show you some rubble wreckage litter scrap or ruins whatever you want to call it and this is part of destructible uh, environment or destructible object and if you know actually if you're good in game design because i didn't found any well good terms for that how you can actually call that stuff which is in the end just debris how you can actually call that in game design then give me a shout out give me a uh, well a comment because i didn't find any sensible or good information how you can actually call that maybe it's just called rubble who knows but still the effect is cool and you came here for the good stuff so if you like what you're seeing consider subscribing and liking sharing and commenting that would be sweet so this is a little uh disclaimer from my side so what is basically going on so i'm having this little bullet which i am uh, well, spawning this is not part of the tutorial because this is easy peasy stuff and then once it has a collision with this little object here then it is spawning one thing which is this little hit effect which is just an object and then bam and then this second stuff it will spawn some rubble wreckage which we define in a few seconds and then well at some point it will disappear as you can see it will not linger around for the whole day so how is that set up quite easy this thing is an object well that thing is an object as well doesn't really matter and then well i'm having a wall object which, so just with a stupid sprite here and then let's make it visible so once these things land on this object on this wall then they stop uh, well moving around and that you can actually do quite easy so let's kill that object wall no 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 so let's go first for the shot and what do we do here quite a few things but not too difficult so we're just having an well, collision with an object of course you would do this with a parent and then well this would be a child but eh, let's make it super easy and what you do you just uh, do a few things first of all you destroy yourself so you don't want to linger around because while well, the shot shouldn't be going through then spawning a huge amount of objects because what in the end this is these are objects and this is a common thing which you see in lots and lots of video games they just spawn tons of objects and then at some point they are getting destroyed because they cannot linger around because well you would clog up the memory for stuff which is lying around which you don't one. So the first thing we want to create a hit effect, which is actually instance destroy uh, instance create layer yeah x y instances. And let's make it as fast as possible. So my hit effect is actually kind of easy. I do that in my other tutorials, but if you haven't watched that, well. It's just having an animation and once the animation is done, I destroy it. And what kind of thing it is? Well, middle center and then it's gone. Super easy peasy, not a problem at all. But what actually I want to do in the object shot. So once this thing is hitting the this little hydrant here, or for example, whatever you like, maybe I want to grab some values and I will explain what they actually mean. So I'm grabbing some values like a position on let's say for example here we're having a hydrant and it has a width and a height so basically i'm centering it that thing in the middle and then this thing has a height so which is well half of, as you can see and the width which is half of, and then in this box i want to create one uh, i don't know randomly my hit so how can we actually do this well quite easy we just say hey other so this is our keyword and then sprite width so we're grabbing the width of that thing so to the left and to the right but we don't want to be let's say width would be i don't know at this point and at this point that's why we're just grabbing half of it therefore we just say hey half then we want to have it as a minus value so we go to the left and then of course we want to have it as a plus value and put that into and what well into a random value so because we want to have it randomly so therefore we say hey 
random range. Come on, come on, give me a random range. Bam. And then hopefully this already works. Come on. Yeah, so because random range you need two values and between those two values you want to have to the left, minus, so half of our width and half of our width to the left and to the right. Bam. And the same we can actually do for our uh, Y thing. So hit Y and then we just not taking our width but our height and then of course we need to have it halfway through. So just keep in mind that for example this does work because this is too uh, centered in the middle but for example if you well, have your, uh, this, your point somewhere else then of course you need to make it a little bit different. So for example what we can now do is add those values to it but we are not finished here because well we don't want to hit it when it's being destroyed we want to go from the origin point of the other thing so the thing which we are colliding so this hydrant and for example now once we do this you will see that at random places that thing is being spawned which is pretty cool so it's somewhere and then it gives off a better vibe which i think is not a bad thing at all and it will of course um, appear a little bit behind because it is behind that thing but i wanted to have it like this so you can actually see the more important part which are those parts flying around so what do we actually want to do well we want to create once again the same thing but not our hit effect but a rubble part and this is exactly what we do so we can basically copy uh, that thing as well but and here comes the but we want to create our particle debris i don't know let's call it debris well i don't know debris here we go and put it in here and then for example we need to uh, well give it some values and therefore we store it into a variable called debris here we go and then for now that thing is actually kind of empty what i almost empty so basically what i was giving it so very very quickly i'm going through that i'm giving it alarm so once the alarm hits off destroy it because well we don't need it and then for example this is the interesting part once it's hitting a wall we reset our speed and our gravity value because these are well forward value values to go somewhere so for example speed is like going in direction and for example the gravity value if it's not zero default it is always zero it is i don't know going downwards or wherever you set your gravity so this is how i reset it for example once it's hitting the wall which is down here so here as you can see it won't be flying to infinity so what is the next thing which we like to do well give it some characteristics so first of all what do we want to have well let's go for some speed value oh, come on with a dot please speed yes here we go and then what kind of values do we want to have i don't know go between a random range of and then of course you need to put in those kind of values which you like to have because well this is then up to you how fast you want to have it flying and i just go between two and three these are pretty good values and then direction so we need to go somewhere so an inner direction and what kind of values can we put in well i just go in the upward cone of course you don't have to do that you can go 360 if you like doesn't really matter in my opinion but it's not a bad way so what is a 45 to 135 but maybe you've seen it for example this is the zero you will go to the right this is 180 to the left so i'm going in a cone which is something in between like this and so they keep on flying this actually looks pretty good so for example once we start doing this you will see that one debris, debris is being fl uh, is flying off but it is not there and if you're thinking like huh so what's actually happening why am i creating this am i seeing something well that thing has not a sprite assigned so we go debris dot sprite index yep and give it one of my well i call it particle but you can call it whatever you like so these are one of those 
things which I just cut out. So basically what I just did, I took, and this is not the best method, by the way. Come on, faster, 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 faster. What I do, I just, oh, come on, faster. I just uh, cut out parts and then bam, save them as Debris. So as you can see this, and this is how you can actually set it up. Not the most efficient way, of course, it looks pretty good. If you don't have too many objects, it does work pretty beautifully, but well, this is how you can do it. Of course, uh, tomorrow or in two days, I will show you a more effective way. But for now, this is good enough. So for example, what we do, uh, we just go choose so another method. Maybe you've seen it, maybe not. So basically, this is just choosing between, well, how many inputs you want to put in. You can have a lot or just two, three, it doesn't really matter, or just one. And then it will choose between one of those two guys. Then once again, we start it. You will see, hopefully, that it does work. So basically, one is flying upwards and, of course, well, because it has no gravity. Therefore, we need to put in a little bit more. So let's go for Debris. Gravity and gravity has two variables you need to use. So let's go for a 0.1. Of course, you can go for some random values, but I think a fixed one is good too. And then gravity, direction, and where to go? Well, downwards, and therefore 270. So once again, uh, come on, where are you? Downwards is 270 because this is zero. So you can understand how that works and for example let's check it out now and you will see that these things are flying up and then it's it's sticking here because well it has a collision and then it's saying like hey speed zero and gravity zero because hey we don't want it to fly and as you can see it does work pretty fine and for now it is good but let's make it a little bit more funky let's go for I don't know, a var amount and repeat that process to make it I random range. No, no. And let's go for, I don't know, between, what do we want? Four to 15 pieces? No, no, no that would be uh, quite a lot. And then go for repeat. So basically this is looping if you have never seen it, repeat. And then go for an amount, bam. And then close it in between and then this thing is being once for example this bullet is hitting the hydrant it will be 5 to 15 of those uh, objects being created which are debris so let's check it out and now it will definitely look already better as you can see oh this is definitely not not too bad and if you're thinking okay this is cool i could uh, end with this no, I have even more. So what can we do? Well, we want to give it, a, as you can see, maybe they are just using the first index because as you can see, this thing is now cycling. So it will just use this one from Debris, um, this particle Hydra R, but we want to have it a little bit more, I don't know, distinguished. And therefore we go for image number and as you can see I'm using almost all inbuilt uh, variables of an object so if you have never seen them well I'm basically using most of them and then what kind of number do we want to have uh, I mean image index my bad so the index is once again one of those guys starting with zero zero one two three da, 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 da. I guess I'm not gonna bore you with that stuff so we go for i random range once again because we need an integer a whole number so we go between zero and the image number minus one because well it will then not work correctly and now we are having a random direction where we're flying random speed some gravity and then one of those two sprites and then we could be of course finished but we can even scale it up a little bit more so we can actually give it a random x and y scale between i don't know 0.5 so half of it or 1.5 and now this will be even more random and of course why not as you can see looks pretty nice and then maybe give it a last touch 
and give it a random value for its rotation. So it's not rotating, it's just having a image angle, a specific angle, so not alpha, angle, come on, angle. And then we go for high random range and then, well, we go around, so 0 and 360. And then once again we start it and we're pretty much done because, well, this was the whole tutorial. Tomorrow I'm gonna show you all. As you can see, it looks pretty fine. And then of course, well, it, it is stopped once it's hitting that thing. And for example, this is how most of the things are working in a lot of video games. So if you just have a few destructible objects, no problem. You just make some sprites, which are kind of your rubble, your debris. Let him fly and that is it. Of course, if you're having tons of different objects, this is not the most optimal way. There is one which I'm going to show you, well, uh, <laughs> in the following video, but that will be definitely more difficult to understand because then we need to grab more values than just, I don't know, just make a Debris, just give it a sprite and then to give it some random parameters and you're good. So hopefully that was of interest to you. Not too long, 15, 16 minutes. Wow, definitely long. So hopefully that was something for you and you now understand how you can make your own debris, rubble, wreckage, litter, scrap, uh, ruins or whatever, destroyable objects in the end in Game Maker Studio or on the other ones because I guess this is the same for uh, the lower versions of Game Maker. So have a good one. One up indeed.